they all deserve a round of applause before this thing is going They get a round of applause just for showing up. If you've got your cell phones, you might want to turn them to silent. Somebody's is going off somewhere, so uh, it's not too loud, but <coughs> hopefully they'll stop calling. It's not an emergency. <laughs> All right, lady, you ready? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we present tonight the story of David and Goliath, a melodrama. Long, long ago, God's chosen people, the Israelites, had a big problem. One you might describe as being of giant proportions. You see, the powerful Philistines had gathered their forces together and were going to war against the Israelites. <laughs> Goliath and the Philistines who were flexing their muscles and posing pridefully. Well, they were camped upon one hill. Audience boos passionately. King Saul and the Israelites, who were staring in fear at the Philistine army, who, by the way, were still flexing their muscles and posing pridefully. Yes, King Saul and the Israelites camped up on the next hill. Audience cheers heartily. Audience continues to cheer heartily. <laughs> now, pay attention closely. Audience leans forward toward the narrator and scoots to the edge of their chairs. <laughs> yes, pay attention closely, for this is what happened next. The greatest warrior of the Philistines, a nine-foot-tall giant named Goliath, stepped out boldly toward the Israelites, taking giant steps, of course. He held out his really cool spear before him. <laughs> Spear strikes his best really cool pose. <laughs> Time out, everybody. <laughs> Okay, so I told you this is improv, right? <laughs> we totally forgot a part of our script. Now, we're not going to totally interrupt for long and rewind, but we are going to interrupt because the thing I noticed, Lydia, is, is that we have a little problem with our spear. <laughs> if a spear is to do any damage, it's got to have a really sharp point, don't you think? <laughs> and I, I, I'm just kind of thinking that's just a little bit dull right there. We're not going to penetrate anybody or anything. We're going to have a problem, so we probably better get a sharp point on that. <laughs> Typecasting. Yeah. <laughs> 
There we go. We got a sharp spear now. I told you we didn't do a dress rehearsal. <laughs> Okay, spear back in your really cool pose real quick. <laughs> now Goliath flexed his powerful muscles, showing off his three favorite bodybuilding poses. <laughs> showing a mouthful of unsightly brown teeth. Good dental hygiene was not so highly regarded in those days. Goliath then loudly stomped his size 21 feet, violently shook his spear, began to challenge the Israelites to a one-on-one -on -one battle, their best warrior against him. Yes, Goliath yelled at the top of his lungs in an incredibly deep voice, Who will fight me today? <laughs> Who will fight me today? Now, if the Israelites won the battle, the Philistines would be their slaves. However, however, should Goliath take the victory, well, that would be very bad news for God's chosen people. Over on the next hill, over on the next hill, King Saul and the Israelites cowered in fear. Their knees shook and their teeth rattled. Some, well, they whimpered like babies. King Saul frowned and massaged his head, being very careful, of course, not to knock off his fancy crown. In fact, King Saul wondered out loud, Who will fight this big brute of a man, this monster Goliath? Who will fight this large man? <laughs> <laughs> <The> monster. <laughs> King Saul looked over his Israelites, who were still quite frightened and were now attempting to hide behind one another. Yes, those Israelites were attempting to hide behind one another. Those silly Israelites were all too weak and too small, not to mention they were still whimpering and shaking need. In great despair, King Saul let out a loud, forlorn sigh. <laughs> And he then said in a kingly voice, Alas! Alas! <laughs> no one can fight this big, ugly Goliath. No one can fight this big, ugly monster Goliath. <laughs> he paused, thinking deeply. <laughs> oh. 
And then he spoke again, especially not me. Especially not me. <laughs> now that is when a bright-eyed shepherd boy named David skipped into the Israelites' camp, whistling the happy tune, London Bridges Falling Down. <laughs> Yes, David had come to bring sack lunches to his brothers. <laughs> now, it just so happened that as soon as David reached the camp, he heard Goliath thunder again, Who will fight me today? Who will fight me today? <laughs> and as usual, Goliath shook his fist and beat his chest. <laughs> and lifted up his spear as a challenge. <laughs> Suddenly, David's eyes got big. He had an idea. So he stepped forward and tapped King Saul on the shoulder. Now King Saul was in such a frightened state because of the threat that Goliath presented that he jumped and shrieked like a teenage girl in a horror movie. <laughs> when Saul saw that it was only David, he was embarrassed and quickly tried to compose himself. <laughs> Standing up as straight and tall as he could, David smiled and said, Do not be afraid. I will fight Goliath. Do not be afraid. I will fight Goliath. <laughs> now this was highly unexpected, and Saul fell to the ground laughing hysterically. <laughs> but David was serious. He then huddled up like a football team with King Saul and the Israelites. In a whisper so soft the audience couldn't hear him, David told them how in his duties as a shepherd, God had delivered him from both lions and bears. <laughs> oh my, King Saul exclaimed from Oh my, King Saul exclaimed loudly from the huddle. Oh my. <laughs> and well, Goliath was no more ferocious than a lion or a bear. Now, now, with a simultaneous clap of the hands like a football team, they broke from their huddle. Hey! <laughs> King Saul shrugged his shoulders and told David, I guess if that's what you want, it's your funeral. I guess if that's what you want, that's your funeral. And he sent the boy on his way. <laughs> Immediately, David went to the nearest stream where he found two small stones and one larger stone to use with his sling. Goliath. <laughs> That's 
what King Saul said. <laughs> First Samuel 17 verse. <laughs> Now Goliath, still holding tightly to his spear, <laughs> and grinning that wicked brown toothed grin again, <laughs> he saw scrawny little David approaching and laughed so loudly that King Saul and the cowardly Israelites began to shake uncontrollably in fear. <laughs> smiled smugly, completely confident that victory was certain. And, if truth be told, King Saul and the Israelites were pretty certain of that fact as well. King Saul and the Israelites, with fear on their faces, look at the audience and all nod their heads rapidly and nervously in agreement. Goliath then flexed his muscles, lifted his spear up as high as he could, <laughs> and he said, Ha! at David, he said, a teeny tiny munchkin. A teeny tiny munchkin. <laughs> this will be like fighting a little girl. <laughs> this will be like fighting a little girl. <laughs> David, unfazed by Goliath's taunting, and the little girl comment. <laughs> Stepped right up to Goliath. And standing on his tiptoes. <laughs> and standing on his tiptoes. He inquired. Goliath? Goliath? <laughs> All you brought with you is that lousy, no good, worthless spear? Oh, you brought? Lousy, no good spear? I have, <laughs> I have come in the name of Jehovah, the Lord my God. for words. Not knowing how to respond to that statement, he just stood there scratching his head and looking quite confused. <laughs> this was David's chance. So he backed up two steps, looked at the biggest stone in his right hand, <laughs> said a quick prayer out loud, <laughs> okay, Lord. <laughs> well, that's confidence if I ever heard it. <laughs> Lord, help her unbelief. <laughs> I will do this. <laughs> For Jehovah, my God. Then he reared back and hurled the stone at the face of this giant warrior. <laughs> the stone struck Goliath right between the eyes. Or thereabouts. And the ugly Philistine, along with his trusted spear, fell straight to the ground. Oh, 
Philistine, along with his trusted spear, fell straight to the ground <laughs> up on the center hill. <laughs> Flat on their backs. <laughs> Faces toward the audience. <laughs> David had won. God's people. Yes, God's people were saved. The Israelites cheered loudly as they jumped up and down, giving high fives to each other. And they continued to give more high fives to each other. King Saul hooped and hollered and uh, waved his hand over his head. King Saul hooped and hollered. And then, to everyone's surprise and enjoyment, King Saul broke into a very cool victory dance. A dance that went on for 15 to 20 seconds. And of course, all of the loyal Israelites followed their king's lead, imitating his very cool moves. Israelite number three and four busted new moves. <laughs> now King Saul did the fish out of water. And King Saul did the fish out of water. <laughs> it's a dance for <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, David walked over to Goliath and kicking aside Goliath's spear, <laughs> the little shepherd boy David stood victorious over the fallen Philistine giant. by the way, was so dead <laughs> that his massive tongue was hanging out of the side of his mouth. <laughs> David flexed his scrawny muscles, then looked up, pointed toward heaven, and gladly proclaimed, with God's help, nothing is impossible. With God's help, nothing is impossible. <laughs> well, that having been said, our story comes to a close as the audience cheers wildly. Their feet, <laughs> locks arms in a single line in front of the stage, locking arms, with locked arms they all 
bowed to the audience simultaneously. And as each one says individually, one at a time, from left to right, thank you for coming. Go, Sue. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Yay! Thank you for coming. 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 Yes, oh yes, absolutely, we do thank you for coming tonight.